If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. We're going to go ahead and try to draw a picture of this DNA molecule. Here's the molecule, not the most elaborate picture, but when the question says that the DNA molecule is singly ionized, all that means is that on one side we're going to have a charge of negative 1e, and on the other side we're going to have a charge of positive 1e. And because of this positive and negative charge, there's going to be an attractive force between the two ends of the molecule. And we know from this chapter that the attractive force is the Coulomb's law force. And so here's the equation for Coulomb's law. We're just going to plug in all the values. Remember that K is a constant. The R is the distance from one end of the molecule to the other end, and that was given in micrometers. Note that because it was given in micrometers, we'll have to multiply that distance by 10 to the minus 6. And then the charges are given as stated. We said this was negative 1E and positive 1E on the other end. Just remember that E is equivalent to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th Coulomb. So with all those known values, we'll simply plug into the formula. Note that because of the absolute value that the value for the force will come out positive. And when we compute this, we get a force of approximately 4.89 times 10 to the minus 17 newtons. We next have to recall something called Hooke's Law, which is a law that describes the behavior of springs that are subjected to forces. So in Hooke's Law, we have the force F, we have the spring constant K, and that's actually what we're looking for, and then we have the distance that the spring compresses when that force is applied. Now, the question notes that the spring compresses 1%. So what we have to do is take 1% of this distance right here in order to calculate x. Now, of course, to take 1% of a value, we have to convert it into a decimal. So 1% expressed as a decimal is 0.01. And then we're going to multiply that by the distance. Let's once again put it in the standard unit of meters by multiplying by 10 to the minus 6. And when we perform that calculation, we can see that x turns out to be 2.17 times 10 to the minus 8th meters. So that's the value of x. We have the value of the force F, so we're ready to calculate k, the effective spring constant. Why don't we actually go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by x so that we can isolate k. And then we'll plug in the known values. And when we simplify this, we get a value of approximately 2.25 times 10 to the minus 9 and since we're dividing newtons by meters, we would have a unit of newtons per meter. So this would be the correct value for the effective spring constant. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. You are welcome to send your own question into this email address and I'll do my best to post the solution to it on YouTube.